morning, church. Please stand, greet your neighbor, and worship the Lord with us. Yeah. 
prodigal child See the world start crumbling Let the gates of glory open wide Good morning, good morning, good morning. Glad you guys are with us. We look forward to worshiping more with you this morning. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. God, I love you. I thank you so much for this day. I thank you for the opportunity we have to be in your house. God, I pray that you just enter this place. God, that we would feel your presence, that we would know you're here. God, speak to our hearts this hour, and it's in your name we do pray. Amen. Faithfulness, my 
fortress over and over. Good morning again. You know, I, uh, 
I've been looking at Amazon again. Some of you guys that were here first uh, message of this series uh, a few weeks back, remember that, you know, there was this big red flag. There was this Amazon, I was looking at a thing to purchase, and the Amazon, uh, there was a person that said, do not buy this, one size doesn't fit all. And I thought, what idiot would order that after that kind of review, and on Monday when it showed up, it's true. This double X in China doesn't fit a double X man here. It's true. I've been looking at more of those, though, and it's funny to see some of the reviews that people write. I don't know if you read them, but now that we've been talking about these things, I've got to where it's just humorous. I've been reading them. And, uh, you know, I was going through and I was reading about some different movies on Amazon. Because you can, if you got Amazon Prime now, you can download those movies, right? Here's what some people have uh, put down there. There's a one-star rating. These are all one-star ratings. They crack me up. Uh, the Paul Blart Mall Cop 2. Uh, it said, I'm mad at my boyfriend for making me watch this. I might leave him. There was another one, Pitch Perfect, one-star rating. Thought it was about baseball. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's a good one. Taken three, one-star rating. I'm beginning to think he's just a bad parent. <laughs> so if you've watched any of these, uh, you'll know exactly what they're talking about. It, uh, there are so many more uh, uh, that I found like this that... I, you know, uh, something about Wall Street, the wolf on Wall Street, and that person put on there, uh, there's no wolves in this movie. <laughs> like they thought it was about wild wolves in Wall Street, so I, I don't know. Uh, but interesting to see all the different comments that people have made. Do you read these things? Uh, the question today is, do you look for the red flags has this got your radar up? Is this something that you're beginning to do? Because, you know, I've had lots of conversations even in the last week where we were talking about friendships last week. And since that message had lots of people, you know, uh, I think innately Christian people, uh, we, we uh, were leery about putting up boundaries, healthy boundaries in our life. As if we're going to offend someone, as if we're going to... Um, make them feel like we don't want to be their friend. And I don't think that's true. I think really in, the, in reality that people will begin to respect that, that they will begin to understand that you are striving to live life differently, okay? And so I think that what happens when people see that you know that it's okay for you to have some red flags, for you to have some healthy boundaries, for you to see these red flags. When uh, Let me give you an example. Um, if you're married and you have a single friend and they're calling you at 10 o'clock at night, there could, needs to be a healthy boundary there. If, if you're married and you're a woman or a man and you have a single friend that's a, the same sex as you and they see somebody that they think's hot and they want to make sure and point that out to you and you're married... That's a red flag. Y'all hearing me? Yeah. So there's this, there's this idea for us to be able to say, wait a minute, this is my boundary. This is where I'm at. And I'm walking with Jesus. I'm not saying I'm holier than you. I'm not trying to act like I'm better than you. But here's some, here's some lines that I got to draw on the sand. And I believe that when people see us do that, that will encourage them to do the same things in their relationships. So I want to carry on this kind of theme about red flags in our relationships, but I want to take it one step further to our romantic relationships, okay? And so uh, there's so much here, so many things that we could talk about, but the big idea that I want to get across to you and to the rest of the world today is our most important relationships need the most red flags, amen? It's very true as we take a look here. You know, our romantic kind of relationships, they're very fragile, they are strong, but can be easily broken. If you've got your Bibles, open them up uh, to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. I'm going to read to you verses 12 through 13, and then we're going to kind of bounce ahead just a little bit to 18 through 20. Um, uh, but, but 1 Corinthians, if you would, turn there for me. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 12. I have the right to do anything, Paul says. You ever heard somebody, I'm a man. I do what I want. <laughs> you ever heard that? <laughs> I, I'm going to do what I want to do. 
Paul is saying, oh yeah, you, you can, big boy. Uh, you can do what you want to do, but he's going to tell us some things here. I have the right to do anything you say, but not everything is beneficial. I have the right to do anything, but I will not be mastered by anything, you say. Food for the stomach is stomach for food, and God will destroy them both. The body, however, is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. And then we jump to verse 18. Flee from sexual immorality. All other sins a person commits are outside of the body, but whoever sins sexually sins against their own body. Do you not know that your bodies are a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. Now, growing up, uh, this, this scripture could be taken out of context when I was growing up. I remember when we were talking about uh, not drinking because it's not good for you or not having some uh, addiction because it's not good for you, whether it's chewing tobacco or smoking or whatever. Uh, and a teenager, I would hear this scripture, your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Glorify God with your body, right? But what he was talking about, he wasn't, I want to be clear here that Paul wasn't talking about chewing, smoking, drinking, whatever. He was talking about sexual immorality. They were dealing with some stuff in these days that were very different. This was a letter written as a response to disturbing reports that Paul was hearing about the church in Corinth. They had divided loyalties, they misuse of spiritual gifts, but the biggest Paul was hearing that many were justifying sexual immorality within the church. Paul recognized that there is something major about dealing with sexual sin, why it can affect someone deeply. There's like this, I know that God places sin all on one level, right? Whenever one person lies uh, or a murder is committed, sin is sin and it separates us from God for all eternity. That's why we need salvation through Jesus, the one who died for our sins. And so we don't have sin on a scale, but the Bible is placing this in a whole other category. Almost like a scale. Saying that these sins that are uh, uh, um, sexual type sins, that they are even bigger. I realize today that even the church of today is faced with these kind of issues. I'm just going to throw a few of them out there. Tell me if, think about it, see if you've heard any of these issues today. Easy one, homosexuality. Gender identity. Sodomy. Fornication. Adultery. Sexual abuse. Just to name a few. But if you've got your listing guides with you this morning, I want you to take a look at the very first thing on your listing guide as we kind of take through these scriptures I only got two points for you today. Somebody say amen. amen. And uh, so listen fast because this one's going to go that way. Flee from sexual immorality. That's what he said in verse 18, that word flee. That I'd underline it, flee from sexual immorality. All other sins a person commits are outside of the body, but whoever sins sexually sins against their own body. I believe that when he's saying flee, I mean, it's like Paul's got this big red flag saying run. I'm reminded, you all remember Joseph. He was sold into slavery by his brothers. He ends up in a guy's house named Potiphar. Everything that Joseph touched seemed to turn to gold. He was one of those guys. God blessed him in every aspect of his life. And Potiphar's wife thought Joseph was attractive. So when Potiphar was out one day, and because Joseph had ex access to Potiphar's house, because he was the one that kind of ran the rest of the servants, he was inside that day, and she tried to come on to Joseph, Potiphar's wife did, and he said, no, I will have nothing to do with this. I won't be this way against my master. And so then she kicks him out of the house and then cries out that he has abused her. Well, long story short, he gets sold. 
He actually ends up in prison again, right? He, f- he fled. Folks, I don't know what sin causes you to grow weak in the knees, but we should flee from all appearances of evil. Our staff, we have a, a, what we call a C4. It's that we, we sign this C4, this com- confidentiality thing. It's, it's, it's three different Cs. One of those things is that we would not be with another staff member or a person of the opposite sex in our church by ourselves. If you've ever walked through our church, you'll notice that every room has a window. All of the offices, all the classrooms, they all have windows. We have cameras in every room. The reason we did that is because we want to live above reproach. We don't want anyone to be able to say anything about us because we want to make sure that our aim and our focus is on God and not on these other lustly things of the world. And folks, we, we've seen this thing creep into the church. We've seen all these issues that I've listed creep into the churches. There are denominations splitting across the board because we want to say, we want to justify uh, these sexual immorality, these sexual sins and say that they're okay or that it's all right for this group or not all right for that group. And the reality is we don't have to determine those things. God's word already did. Now, is God telling us don't love folks that do these? No, we're supposed to love everyone. People say, well, how do you do that? How do you bring those two together? Listen, it's because I can love them, but I don't have to do them things. Y'all with me? Here's some red flags that deal with sexual immorality. The first one is pornography. Look at these statistics. 64% of men have viewed it in the last month. 15% to 35% of women in the last month. Red flags, we shouldn't spend time alone in compromising situations or cross boundaries with others about marital problems in our life. We need to have a strategy. We need to make our boundaries clear. We need to keep... Our relationships at work, professional. A red flag, playful, flirtatious. Underneath that, I just said, don't do it. Don't do it. Colossians chapter 3, verse 5. He says, don't do it. Here's how he says it. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is adultery. Flee and put it to death. Here's the second thing. Talk about red flags to protect your relationship. Let's be transparent, amen? Somebody say amen. See, normally I would just park it and keep on talking about things, but this one makes us all uncomfortable, right? I mean, there are certain things in the Bible we wish that we could just go around instead of teach through them, but God said, no, Rusty, we need to teach through it. This is something that we are facing as a society today. It's very real, and it's not just outside the church. It's inside the church. Godly people, we need to flee. We need to talk about these red flags. We need to protect our relationships. Verse 12 said, I have the right to do anything, you say, but not everything is beneficial. I have the right to do anything, but I will not be mastered by anything. Can you say that? I will not be mastered by anything. It's like telling the devil, you ain't getting your way in my life. I tell people there's some things we can do. We can talk to somebody professionally about these things in our life. We can go see our pastor. We can have a therapist. We can go to those kind of things. We can go to somewhere like Celebrate Recovery. Folks, I want to tell you something. We have one of the best Celebrate Recoveries in the state right here in our town over at uh, Cornerstone. You guys, I I believe that God wants us to seek help. But we got to get help. Luke chapter 13, 6 through 9 says, Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree growing in his vineyard. 
He went to look for fruit on it, uh, uh, but did not find any. So he said to the man who took care of the vineyard, for three years now I've been coming to look for fruit on this fig tree, and I haven't, I haven't found any. Cut it down. Why should it use up the soil? Sir, the man replied, leave it alone for one more year, and I'll dig around it, and I'll fertilize it. If it bears fruit next year, fine. If not, then cut it down. Friend, I want to tell you something. Instead of condemning yourself today, you might just need the gardener. You might need that outside help. You might need that professional help. Someone to help you. Somebody to dig around the roots. Somebody to put some fertilizer in there. Sure, our life isn't producing fruit when we're living outside of the will of God. When we're not doing what God's called us to do and be who God's called us to be. You might need some time. He says, just give it a year. Give it some time, man. Like, like don't do it yet. And he's pleading with the owner of the vineyard. I love what God's word says. It says that he is not slow. In keeping his promises, as some understand slowness, in Second Peter chapter three verse nine, he's not slow as uh, uh, as some people uh, see slowness, but but he's patient with us, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Isn't that beautiful? God is patient with us. God is uh, uh, loving towards us. He is merciful and he is kind towards us. Just don't keep it covered up. See, unconfessed sin will destroy you. It'll eat you up at the core. But one thing I know is that it's true is 1 John 1, 9. It says that Jesus, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Though your sins be red as scarlet, they shall be washed white as snow. They will be remembered no more. He will cast them as far as the east is from the west. I found this quote by Andy Stanley. Look at it with me. Nothing has stolen more dreams, dashed more hopes, broken up more families, and messed up more people psychologically than our propensity to disregard God's commands regarding sexual purity. That's Andy Stanley. See, your next step today, it's two-part. We need to accept God's forgiveness and work toward sexual purity. It is so damaging, friend. Sin will take you further than you want to go, cost you more than you want to pay, and keep you longer than you want to stay. And today, we have a chance to surrender that to the Lord. Now, if you've been watching your listening guides for the last few weeks, we've been talking about doing the Lord's Supper. And so right now, we're going to take the Lord's Supper. It's why I reserved this place out of it. I didn't put a third point in this message because I wanted to take this moment and say, I don't know where you are or what you've been going through, what sin you might have encountered in your life, whether it was sexual sin or even just habitual lying, right? Or deceiving, not telling the whole truth, gossiping, whatever it might be. But the Lord's Supper, Jesus says, remember me when you do this. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. This is a time for us to look at the sin in our own life, not the person next to us, not the person we live with or the person in front or behind us to wonder what their sin might be, but to simply look at our sin and say, God, forgive me. I believe God forgave us when we asked him to be our Lord and Savior of all of our sins. But I believe when we confess our sins daily to God, that it just draws our relationship close to him. Our hope is through this time of taking the Lord's Supper, people say, Rusty, why don't you take the Lord's Supper every week? Because I don't want it just to become a religious activity. I want this to be meaningful. Now, when you take it, you're remembering the suffering Jesus suffered for your sin. That you remember that he died for your sin. But that you're more than that, you're remembering that he rose again. He conquered death and hell. He defeated our sin. And he has the victory. Friend, you don't have to just be an overcomer in this life. Uh, or I mean, you don't just have to be a coper. You're an overcomer through the blood of Jesus. He washes it white as snow. Today, you can walk out of this place. When you observe this today, you can walk out of this place today saying he forgave me. 
He forgave me. I can hold my head high no matter what I've done, what I've said, where I've been. No matter any of those things in my past, God has forgot them. Maybe other people didn't, but God did. And I can know that I'm a new creation and that I can represent Jesus wholeheartedly saying, God, yes, I'm ashamed of that yesterday. But God, I'm so thankful for what you did today. Our guys are going to come as I read this scripture. And they're going to begin to pass this out to you. And then we're going to take the Lord's Supper together. So don't, don't open it yet. But be ready. On the bottom part of your cup is going to be the bread. And on the top part will be the drink. And uh, we're going to do that together in just a moment. Here's what he said. You guys go ahead and pass it out. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you, Paul said. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took the bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. You proclaim that he has saved you, that he has uh, raised you, that he has forgiven you. So then whoever eats the bread and drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. Here's what he says about this. Here's what is so important. Every, everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat the bread and drink the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body the, uh, of Christ and eat, uh, drink judgment on themselves, that is why many among you are weak and sick and a number of you have fallen asleep. But if we were more discerning with regard to ourselves, we would not come under such judgment. Nevertheless, when we are judged in this way by the Lord, we are being disciplined so that we will not be finally condemned with the world. I don't know about you, but I feel the conviction of God on my life. And in this moment, he's asking us to examine ourselves. So if you would, bow your heads with me. I want to pray for this bread as we remember the body and the blood of Jesus. Lord, I love you. I thank you so much for this day. God, I thank you for your body that was broken for us. God, the sacrifice you made. God, that we could be forgiven. God, we take this bread remembering what you've done for us. And God, we come to you saying, God, please forgive me. And it's in your name we do pray. Amen. You can take the bread. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Let me pray for this. Lord, I love you. I thank you for the, your blood that was shed for our sins. <clears throat> God, I thank you that we can be cleansed, made clean by your blood. God, as we drink this cup, let us remember that, God, we walk out of here new. <clears throat> Not because of this juice in the cup, but because of the promise in your book. God, we love you and we thank you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. You can drink the cup. <clears throat> I want to offer you an invitation this morning. You can stand with me right now. Matt, I don't know what you're dealing with. I don't know if you need to lay it down at the altar. 65% of men, 35% of women this month, this, this week. Maybe you need to come and say, God, I've been trying to get rid of this addiction in my life. I need to have it gone. Maybe this morning you come and say, there's problems in my marriage. There's problems in my life. I've been abused. I don't know where to go with this. I don't know what to do with this, God. But we want to invite you to come and pray with us. Now, I don't know the deal, but Jesus does. And there's a reason he wanted us to talk about this today. And it's so that you can be whole again. 
Maybe you've never trusted Jesus in your Lord and Savior. Today, He wants you more than ever to come to Him and know Him. He wants to transform your life and your eternity. If that's you, come to me today and just say, Rusty, I need a new eternity. Maybe you just need to rededicate your life. You've been running so hard and so long, you just need to rededicate. Would you do that today? During this time, right now. Lord, we love you. We thank you for this day and for this opportunity to be in your house. God, I, be with, I pray you be with each and every person here. God, as we do business along these front steps, God, let it be pleasing and, and, and glorify you for the work that you're doing in our heart and our life. It's in your name we pray. Amen. You all come right now. If you're online, you call us right now. Come on, friend. It's never been a moment you have forgotten you are not hopeless Though you've been broken Your innocence stolen I hear you whisper Underneath your breath I hear your SOS Your SOS out an army to find you in the middle of the darkest night it's true I will rescue you there is no distance that cannot be covered over and over you're not defenseless I'll be a shelter, I'll be your armor. I hear you whisper underneath your breath. I hear your SOS, your SOS. the hardest fight it's true I will rescue you oh I will rescue you
Amen. Thank you, Rusty. Please. Amen. Hey, you know what? What's that? We got two guys that are going to preach at two other churches this morning. Amen. Yeah, that's a cool thing. Aaron's going to be going to a church, and so is Mike. Mike Birch is his first sermon he's going to give today, and uh, it's just cool stuff. Absolutely, bro. Amen. People are going to get afraid to hang out with me because we send them to go preach. (laughs) (laughs) There you go. We're going to take an offering at this time. Please come forward. Father God, just uh, so thankful for the blessings that you've given us, Lord. Be with this offering and multiply it for your use. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Like Rusty said, a couple guys going out to preach this morning. Uh, Keep them in your thoughts and prayers. Uh, Aaron's getting to be old hat at this, so he's probably going to not long for us. He'll be leaving us pretty quick and going to a church on his own. Mary's got something for me this morning. What's Mary got? Gals of Promise have a day change. They're going to meet on Wednesday, November the 2nd, instead of Thursday the 3rd. So it's on your uh, listening guide, but uh, scratch out the, uh, well, it says November the 2nd. It's correct on here. Okay, a little more information. Going to bring back the decorated Christmas trees and foods for our Christmas boxes. Deliver these trees to Farewell Nursing Home. So they're doing a little project. So are you working on Christmas trees? All right. And uh, so at that uh, Wednesday, November the 2nd, instead of Thursday, Gals of Promise going to be meeting here at the church. If you have, need any more information, Mary is a wealth of knowledge and a wonderful, wonderful lady. Probably the biggest thing going on probably this week is tomorrow night we've got uh, Trunk or Treat here at the church. I uh, want to shout out and thank everybody that's brought candy in for that. Uh, the, the goal is to, to keep everybody supplied in candy. We have Typically, we have about 1,000 kids that come through the parking lot in a safe environment, and we just share a little bit of love with them, spread out to the neighborhood, and, and just witness to them just the love that God has shown us. So uh, be, with, uh, be with us tomorrow night if you can. And we'd love to have you have a great time of food, fun, and fellowship, and and just a great time sharing with the group. Uh, Let's go to the Lord in prayer and be dismissed. Father God, just so thankful for the blessings that you've given us. Watch over us through this day and bring us back next week. In Christ's name we pray, amen.